they pushed me in the direction of like trying harder at the game and trying to get good at it. At the time, it was pretty unheard of for a Singaporean team to go overseas. Am I still good enough to go pro? Do teams still want me? I just wasn't satisfied with myself. I didn't want that to be how I end my career. I wasn't done with it yet. Singapore. Growing up in Singapore, I'd say I had the most like tame childhood. Growing up just like a normal like Asian upbringing. My parents had a lot of emphasis on studies in the earlier days. As time went on, like my dad got me an Xbox, which got me into like gaming quite a lot. I have a brother and sister and they're like very high achievers in terms of like their studies. So I think they just wanted a kid who was a bit more laid back. They would tend to let me have more like time to enjoy myself in terms of like leisure time, like playing games and stuff. So it was my friends that I made in Call of Duty that after a while we decided to try out new games together. And one of the games were CSGO. And after that we just played with each other more often and they kind of figured that I was pretty good at it like naturally. So they kind of pushed me in the direction of like trying harder at the game and trying to get good at it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I am Yong Shen. I know Ben for about 12 years since school. I would say I am his uh, part-time boyfriend. <laughs> First impression of Ben, he was very quiet. He was always late, never around. A random face that would appear once in a while. After a while, we got to know him a bit more. We started playing games together, for example, Counter-Strike or whatever. We became relatively close. So we were quite a tight-knit of friends, I would say. I was discovered by another team in Singapore through matchmaking. I think I was 17 or 16. So at the time I was just still studying and didn't really have any like big ambitions yet. So it just seemed like a fun thing to do at the time. Conveniently for me, it was already the best team in CS at the time in Singapore. So I guess it was a pretty big opportunity for me. When I told my parents, they were like, of course, skeptical at first. But eventually they let me join just to see like how it can go. So this team, it was called Dreamscape. We went to, I think the event was ASUS ROG, one of them, where they held it in Malaysia. We traveled there and we got pretty far into the tournament. And conveniently at the time, the boss of a Chinese organization called Bu was there and he was interested in the way that we performed. So that was when we were offered our first like real contract with like a salary. At the time, it was pretty unheard of for like a Singaporean team to go overseas. I think it was much simpler back then, like our goals. Most of our goals were just to like win the qualifier because that would prove that we were the best in Asia at the time. So like it didn't matter if we won or lost at those events, we just got there. The first time I encountered Ben Kai is like in-game, like CSGO back then in 2018, when he was like playing with uh, Boot Dreamscape. And I was like in the same team with him. I think I can say like a lot of people see Ben as like uh, this funny and energetic guy, right? In real life, a bit hard to approach as a person. You know, you need to come up with him and like try to talk. He's usually like very quiet. Yeah, I don't think like a lot of people can see this side of Ben unless you are close to him. Okay, thank you. All right. When we first saw gameplay of it, we did like other games like CS, all these other regions like NA and EU had like years ahead of us in terms of starting points. But in Valorant, everybody had the same starting point. I think it's the fashion in which they reached here, right? They were dominant every single time we saw them and they have their own style brand. They don't have to adapt to anyone else. Everyone else has to follow them. It was something that we could pick up really quickly and innovate. We didn't really have a region to like define the meta. So we saw it as an opportunity to come up with our own play style and our own way to approach the game. Not my decision, so experience things from the backseat. 2023 was just, I'd say, uneventful. It was uh, challenging and uh, I just want to be able to play. And I didn't really get to do that. Regardless, I don't really have any regrets throughout that year. And they're definitely very cool. Had different ideas of what I could do, but my main focus was always on finding the next team to play with. I just wasn't satisfied with myself. I didn't want that to be how I end my career. I wasn't done with it yet. 
the first roster plan in global esports make me think do i really want to play in this team and then ben news came up at least i know him you know so yeah i'm quite happy he came to g he always saying like i still have like a lot you know to prove to the world in game itself like he's helping like a lot with the calls because he's like the second caller in our team he's also like a very good strategic maker i guess he have like a lot in mind and a lot of experience before so he's actually like, you know, helping us with the lineups and battle plan strategy. He always come up with like these new ideas of how to play the round itself. I think he's a good player and good friend, I guess. A lot of people like, you know, can make assumptions about him. For God, he's actually a good player as well. Like he's one of the PepperX guys who came to the grand finals and stuff. Benkai walked out in a dinosaur costume, man. <laughs> and the performance that he had on that map, it's, unreal. It's a standing ovation too from the crowd. People think what they want to think. I think he just want to be himself, you know, like to make people laugh, you know, make people smile and stuff like that. Two to three years, I would hope that I'm still playing. Like, I don't think I'll be done playing yet. I guess I'm more focused on my own gameplay now, fragging as an individual, so I could prove myself on like a more individual level. That's what like my main drive this year. I still can't wrap my head around how like I know him for 12 plus years really, and I never stopped defying what is possible, especially in Singapore. He was good back then, he's even better now. But it's still very surreal to see someone that I know, someone who I grew up with, perform internationally. Definitely very cool. We were classmates prior. I think it was one of my birthdays. So they decided to buy me a mouse pad. They all decided to sign the back of the mouse pad. Our beloved Bankai signature here. Not sure if it adds any value to it. I doubt so, but yeah. Ben, I think he has nothing better to do in class last time. So he decided to draw something. It's a very memorable piece. Honestly, I don't think it's gonna change that much by having it as my job and just playing the game and getting better. A lot of these players are very young, so they don't really feel the pressure of having a stable job yet. When it's at around my age, you start to feel like it's more of like a livelihood, you know? So I have different paths that I can take after I'm done playing. The most obvious one for me is to become a coach. I feel safe knowing that I have the possibility of becoming like a desk talent if I wanted to. It's given me a lot more opportunities outside of the game. Like since going to these events and stuff, I made it a point to just make friends with all the Riot producers and like their video crews and stuff. So I'm like good friends with most of them. They're like people that I always look forward to seeing when I go over seas to these events. And I think making those connections helped me. It gave me like more longevity in my career. That's how Valorant changed my life.